So is this enough evidence to prove that cubing might be on its way out? Do you remember that old Blend the Rules video? It was 14 minutes of nothing you haven't seen before, you know. Inspection time is cheating and all the current rankings and times are wrong because they use inspection time. You shouldn't be able to use inspection time. Generic point, blah blah blah, I heard it all before. But because the editing was pretty good, some people actually listened. Most people just disagreed and ratioed the man, but some people actually did stop and listen. Yeah, this is worse. We have a new worst cubing opinion piece on YouTube, so let's break it down. Jperm has started a second channel based entirely away from speed cubing. God forbid a man have hobbies. Many of the top creators have slowed down in making videos. Balls. Okay, let's break down all of the YouTubers that are on screen here. Number one, Cubehead. Well, it looks like Cubehead has had a very healthy and regular upload schedule. And now, for important context, every screenshot of a YouTuber's upload schedule in this segment of my video was taken just four days after UK Cuba's video went up. So pretty much nothing will have changed. This was all information that was publicly available to UK Cuba when he made his video. I, while we're talking about Cubehead, he also did an entire stream with Matty Hiroto Anaba, and I believe he's supposed to be working on some other big cubing related project in the background too. So we could cut him some slack on the upload schedule if there was any slack in his upload schedule, but there's not. So Cubehead doesn't belong on this list. What about the next one, Cubing Encoded? Well, he was uploading regularly, then he made a video about his life in uni, took an eight month break, and then uploaded three videos in a two week span. So the guy has an irregular upload schedule, probably because he's a university student and that takes priority in his life. I don't think that reflects the cubing scene at all. A person is in uni, oh boo hoo. Tingman. Tingman is uploading like nobody's business. He's been putting out between four and nine full length videos per month since forever. At least a full year ago. I don't see why he's included in this list. Cubesolve Hero stopped posting videos regularly about a year ago, and since then he's made two more videos. In the comments of his most recent video he says that he's hoping to be back on for the long run and that he wants to make longer form videos. But honestly, I think I'll, I'll give this point to UK Cuba. he's gotten one out of four correct so far. Soup Timmy. Soup Timmy still uploads at least monthly and he puts out frequent shorts. Why is he here? Cubix. Cubix started uploading 14 years ago and he stopped uploading two years ago. And I feel like listing the super OG YouTubers that have stopped uploading is kind of like cheating because of course the people that started uploading videos a decade and a half ago will have stopped by now. The target audience for YouTubing videos these days isn't even a decade and a half old. <sighs> Look, the guy had a YouTube career for 12 years. You can't complain when he finally stops. He had to stop at some point. It's like saying that cubing is dead because Mintai doesn't compete anymore. Or Thwarst stopped uploading. Did Thwarst stop uploading? I actually don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I tried to find out who this last guy is, couldn't find him. I, I, I have no idea who this person is. So maybe UK Cuba has a point with them as well. But out of UK Cuba's list of seven different UCubers, only one or maybe possibly two actually fit the point. The other five are just popular YouTubers that are there. UK Cuba was wrong. In this video, I am going to be covering why I think cubing is dying, what has led up to this point, and what has to change if we want any chance of this hobby surviving. Well, to begin, let me tell you why I haven't picked up a cube in such a long time. And the main reason is that I generally have not been finding cubing that fun anymore. And I think this is echoed similarly throughout the entire community. Whoa, 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 check the screenshots, check the screenshots, timestamps. Two months ago, one year ago, eight years ago. All right, all right, I'm gonna wrap back to those soon, but firstly, we can all lose motivation from time to time, and generally the best way to combat this is to try something new. A new event, a new concept, a new corner of cubing you haven't touched before, like hardware or method dev or hypercubing or challenges. Cubing is a really deep hobby. You can almost certainly find something new to do. If you just don't want to do that and would rather try out a new hobby, then that's completely fine as well. Just don't say that it's cubing's fault or that cubing is dying. All right, so back to the timestamps. If this was a common sentiment in the community, why are some of these posts almost an entire decade apart? Huh? One of UK Cuba's own comments shines a light on this. He had the idea for the video, recorded the voiceover, recorded the background footage, got all the way up to the editing phase, all before he looked online to see if anyone agreed with him. So when he needed to evidence his claim, he used Reddit's search function to find people that agreed with him. 
let this be a lesson to anyone that wants to make a video of this sort. Check first. If you're going to talk about a community sentiment, make sure it exists. If you're making any claims, check the proof before you make the video. Don't make a video based on a hunch or based on what you feel like and project that out and proclaim it as fact or as community sentiment without knowing if it is you know, actually fact or actually community sentiment. There are a couple of things that have caused this, and the first and most obvious is the sheer lack of exciting releases. This is something that is talked about really often, so I'll keep this short. But I think that the last cube everyone was excited for was the X-Man Tornado version 3, and that was released over a year ago now. You could argue that the GAN 14 was somewhat exciting, but to be honest, I didn't pay that much attention to that release, which is why I don't know too much about it. Maybe he just worded it poorly, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it sounds a lot like his argument that he didn't like the GAN-14 was that he personally didn't know much about the GAN-14. I don't know much about the GAN-14, but I know that every GAN flagship is a big release. And this argument that the Tornado V3 was the last exciting release, I mean, that's just not correct. The Hong 5x5 has generated a lot of hype very recently. So the cubes need to innovate. The Hong 5 is the first factory produced 5x5 with a ball core. So it's got UV coding, it's got corners of core magnets. This is crazy for a 5x5. If we want to talk about hype, the GAN 5x5 has been low-key generating hype on the down low for a while now, and it's been officially announced recently. That's very exciting. <sighs> but if we look to the comments again, once more, we see a light shone upon this argument. A UK-based speed cubing store, and in fact, UK Cuba's own sponsor and local ZZ Method hater, speedcubing.org, steps in and disagrees with UK Cuba. Sales data apparently said that the Tornado V3 was no more special than any other Mo Yorgan release. <laughs> That's just funny. <laughs> now one thing I want to pay attention to here a little bit, just remember hardware releases was UK Cuba's primary go-to, their first thing they thought of, just hold that in your mind, we'll come back to it later. One of the big things that I'm seeing now is that there is so much less of an interest in results compared to a couple of years ago. Before, everyone really cared about who was the fastest, and the battle between Max and Timon was a really exciting time. But if you just look at the world record videos now, they've gotten barely any views compared to the previous years, even after a good couple of months. And that's a shame, because one of the big things that would really help cubing grow is having a very competitive group of speed cubers who are constantly one-upping each other to be the best but that just isn't happening, which means that we only hear about competition results every four or five months because no big things are changing in the meantime. It's not just the lack of care for results, because I do still think people are interested, but more so how infrequent changes are happening, which means we get stuck in this weird area of nothing for long periods of time. I want to give an enormous shout out to Charlie Harrison for showing up in the comment section and pointing out that the specific uploads that UK Cuba used to evidence his claim about the views and the attention well, those were cherry-picked to exaggerate the point. And he also pointed out that the situation we have now with Yiheng at the top and less competitors is also the same thing we had for the better part of a decade with Felix Zemdex. And that is a very good point. And furthermore, I, as I recall it, Felix Zemdex's reign over the world of speed cubing was considered to be a golden era. Why is it bad when Yiheng starts to pull ahead? And about the frequency. You say you only hear about, you know, big comp results every four or five months. 53 world records were set in 2023. Now, of course, they weren't going to be set on a regular schedule. They average out to more than once a week, but there will be gaps. So I went onto the WCA records page and I looked at the date for every world record in 2023. And I'm pretty sure that the biggest gap was this one here, about three weeks and one day. That's a lot smaller of a gap than five months now, isn't it? And throughout 2023, if you just look through, you'll see records were set every other week, if not every week, even having days with two or three or even four world records set. Four months? Where did you get that from? And that will kill any hobby or community. It's just extremely apparent in speed cubing. Brother, you have not seen some of the speedrunning communities out there. Some of the most difficult and some of the most prestigious and popular runs, like Super Mario 64, GoldenEye, Doom, those records can stand for months, if not years. It's news when the SM64-120 star gets broken. Damn Agent in GoldenEye was 53 seconds for 15 years before Carl Jobs got the first 52. The first level of Doom, Hangar, E1, M1, that was 9 seconds for 2 decades before it was broken. And those communities did not die. They did not die, and they still have not died, and they have show no sign of dying out whatsoever. So even if the world records were only once per 5 months, that's 
not the end of the world. Again, this is another thing I'm going to loop back to later, so hang around for this. I just wanted to stop the video here to say that I found someone on Reddit who predicted five years ago that world records would start to become significantly less frequent and therefore the hype would die. And I think this perfectly sums up the point I'm trying to make. It's just they said it five years ago. Yeah, okay, you know, as things get more optimised, they're going to get harder to improve on because they're more optimised. That's not really a difficult prediction to make. I don't see why this is in the video. Uh, after this... He goes on a bit of a rant about how cringe social media is and how we waste too much time. People would rather scroll through short form media than actually engage in a hobby, which is true. It's a little bit unrelated to the topic at hand because it affects everything equally. This isn't a cubing issue, but I mean, it's true. A lot of people would rather watch videos about cubing than actually you know, turn the video off and cube themselves. Don't even think about it. So now let's move on to what has led up to this point. And much like before, I think the first point is obvious, which is that there are no longer any interesting releases from cube companies. Everyone is just repackaging last year's product and calling it something new, when in reality there are very few actual changes. This means that there is no excitement around releases because everyone already knows that nothing is actually going to be different. And I think that a lot of people saw this coming from a few years ago. Ever since the GAN 12 was released, which was such a disappointment, Appointment compared to the excitement of the GAN 11. Okay, I find it kind of funny that he calls the GAN 12 a disappointment. I don't want to sound like Terry McCasey here, but the GAN 12 is incredibly popular among the fastest 3x3 solvers in the world. It's definitely not a letdown. It just started to become clear that if no one innovated, then cubing would soon start to become less and less about the cubes which we use. And that's a shame because before, this was one of the major things that influenced the growth of this hobby. Another thing that has led up to this point is the vast skill gap within cubing. For someone like me who has been doing it for many years, it's so demotivated when you just aren't getting the improvements that you would like to see. This is the same with any sport or competitive hobby and is by no means the fault of anyone within this community. It's just a naturally occurring thing that happens when other people improve at such a rapid rate. Get okay, but now actually, when you have a competitive thing, it can be demotivating to keep losing and losing and losing. Which is why it's great that cubing is a solo competitive hobby where you only compete against yourself. Unless you're in the absolute upper echelons, I'm talking top 20 in your event, it's you versus you. That's nice. Next, I think that there should be a change to the competition structure, whether that be a 1v1 format tournament or a new event that puts everyone at a more equal starting point. There needs to be something that changes the scene and brings new people into the competitive side of the hobby. Many people have spoken about a live competition with high stakes and knockout stages, and I truly believe that this could massively increase viewership to this community. And where there are views, there will come people to capitalise on those views, which is where the new creators blow up or the old creators start posting more which would revive the community all right now we're getting somewhere remember when i said i'd loop back around to the whole world records thing this is that uh, as records will only get rarer as time goes there's a few things we can do to keep the hype up in the community firstly we need to place more emphasis on championships whether it be national continental world they've always played second fiddle to getting a record for that same region so we as the cuban community need to stop caring a little bit more about who is the champion where as for the different tournament format, yeah, no, I agree. I already made a video about this, and a lot of people seem to share this opinion. It will, however, infringe on the WCA's mission statement, which is to give everybody an equal chance to compete in all competitions under the same conditions, pure equity. Having an invite-only tournament or a competition where you can only register if you're, say, sub-7 on 3x3, and then that tournament has a different format, different conditions, uh, to a regular competition, that does infringe on the mission statement. But it seems like some people in the WCA and some people in the WSOT are open to the idea of making small infringements on the mission statement, so long as these small infringements result in big positive changes in the way that the community and the general public spectates the sport. So in the future of speed cubing, we might see these exclusive knockout tournaments or a league format or something like that, which will sacrifice a relatively tiny amount of equity for large amounts of interest in the hobby. If uh, you know, say for example, if there were 15 of these competitions held annually, well, in 2023, we had 2,138 regular competitions held. Uh, this means that if we had these knockout competitions, they would only make up 0.7% of all competitions at most. So that's a really small infringement, I think, considering the possible upsides. And that's it. That's the video.
You notice anything strange? Do you notice anything missing from this video? I noticed a fair few things missing. I mean, we're talking about cubing here. UK Cuba only talked about 3x3 three three hardware and 3x3 three three world records. What about hardware and records for the other 16 event? What about national records? What about continental records? What about unofficial events? What about puzzle theory? What about method and architect development? What about new software? What about hypercubing? What about championships? What about the interesting statistics that comes out of speaking? Of what about anything? Come on. There's something in this world called anamorphic art. Uh, Three-dimensional art pieces that make sense from one angle or, or look different from different angles. L look it up. It's really cool. Now, try to think of cubing this way. Like a sculpture that was made and then pieces pulled out and held up uh, in varying positions across different axes so that if you stand in one place, you'll see the sculpture as it was made. But if you stand in a different place, you'll see something else. If you just walk around 90 degrees and stare at it from a different angle, it'll be completely different. Sure, if the place where you are standing now only shows 3x3 three three world records and 3x3 three three hardware, cubing might be getting dull. But if you just take a little walk around the sculpture, you will see dozens of brand new things that you never knew were there. Sometimes you don't need to change the hobby. You just need to change your perspective. The question, is cubing dead? The verdict, we will survive. Yes, sir.